Okay. Welcome to your local cynic. <laughs> I had to say that. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now. I was looking at all these new Uber updates because, you know, I'll be checking out videos, man. I try to stay with the community and all that. So I'm checking out these new updates. And it's kind of funny how everything's like illustration now. Think about it. Everything's illustration. Now, if you know psychology, the first thing you know is that your brain thinks in illustration. This doesn't think in words or numbers. It thinks in illustrations. So when I'm seeing all of these illustrations being put on this new update, I'm like, you know what maybe this is not for us because you know all i really want to see is is what my average per mile is average per minute i want to see what that is you know dollar per mile dollar per minute what my averages are because it's a business this is what it is it's a business but it seems like everything has been done for the ease of navigation and me i know my city i know my market i tell y'all you know y'all be seeing pings on my shit and i'm like man this right here is this bar called k's right around the corner i know that because i've done it a million times so all these illustrations are not done like they even got the pictures on the new the new app you got pictures on there, and there so this can't be for me it must be to some new people they got coming into my market that might need to see a picture of where they going they might see illustrations of you know if you if you speak another language or you read another language and english is kind of hard to see because you send me to to turkey or you send me to thailand or you send me to japan i'm not going to be able to read what these apps are saying but if you put pictures on it, I know what pictures look like. I know what a person standing there must mean that I'm going to drive to that person. I know a square means that's where my stop is. So I don't need to read Japanese if I could just read the illustrations on the map. You know what I'm saying? So I could drive in any country now. You could send me to Germany. I don't got to read German. I just look at the little person standing on the map. Okay, I'm going to pick up the person at the person. Then you see the little square. Okay, that's where we're going to stop. If I don't know what a building looks like, hey, it's a building right here on the, that's what the, so it's going to be a building with a red door. That's all I need to know. So it takes out the reading aspect of everything. Cause like I said, it's psychology. If your brain thinks in pictures, then you don't need to read words. You don't need to see numbers because it's not about where they never said anything about the numbers. What I would like to see on the update is put an average per mile. I mean, if you got apps like power and solo and all those telling you stuff like that, put the, the dollar per mile on my trip. Because you can tell me what the surge is. You can tell me what the upfront fare is. Have the algorithm do a quick calculation on the side. Put that like $3 per mile, you know, X amount of dollars per minute or per hour. Comes out to be, you know, $22 per hour, $42 per hour. Put that calculation to the side because the algorithm can do that quicker than I can do it. So why am I using my brain to do what the algorithm can do super fast? Because this shit ain't for me, the driver. It's not for me. Don't play like it's for me. I know who it's for. Don't play like it's for me. Because if everybody wants to talk about it, it's going to help you calculate faster. It's going to help. Why should I have to calculate? I mean, if the if the app does this, the algorithm does this, let it do the calculation. Because it can calculate how far I am from the pickup, right? It can calculate how far I got to drive. Then let it calculate my average dollar per mile and my average dollar per hour based on the trip right here. Let me know. Hey, if you take this trip, it's going to be $122 per hour because it's such a short trip at a high dollar. Let me know it's going to be $122 an hour. $42 an hour, $18 an hour. Let it calculate it for me. If you want to help me out as a driver, you want to help me out. But instead, you're throwing pictures up on it. Everything's the new illustration, a new picture. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. But I'm one of those people that, you know, I'm the local cynic. I want to think like the criminal. Okay, why are you doing this all of a sudden now? But the important information, why can't we see anything about the money? The upfront fare is still real big. U.S. dollars, big number right there, U.S. dollars, $15 for this trip, ooh, $15, yeah, but you're not telling me the value of that trip, tell me the actual value of that trip to me, because $15 is $15, but is it for 15 miles, if it's for 3 miles, put 3 miles total, 3 miles total, but in the thing, put average $5 a mile, you know, $72 per hour, put that to the side so I can say, hey, if I take this trip, man, this is $5 per mile, this is $72 per hour, put that to the side, I like to see that, so I ain't got to do no calculation, because if I'm driving in traffic, because most drivers don't park in parking lots like we do, cherry pickers like to park, most of these got to stay busy drivers, they're in traffic driving, so now they got to drive, not rearing this motherfucker in front of them, and then turn around and calculate math, when we got an algorithm, why don't you let the algorithm do the math? If you really want to help drivers out, help us keep our eyes on the road. Help us stay focused on what's in front of us. Stop sending us rides back after back, just all these rides back to back. And give us the calculation on the screen. That would help. I think that, because then when you see something that says 50 cent a mile, you know, nope. 70 cents a mile, nope. 
Dollar eighteen a mile doing a concert. Nope. Fourteen dollars a mile. I'll take that. Sixteen dollars a mile. I'll take that. Eight dollars a mile. I'll take that. Four dollars a mile. I'll take that. Hundred twenty-two dollars an hour. I'll take that. Fifty cent a mile. Kick that shit out. Because those are the calculations that we want to see on the screen. We don't want to have to sit there and do math and shit while we driving at 70 miles an hour. We don't want to do that. So if you want to help drivers out, oh, we're listening to the drivers. You ain't listening to shit. Keep it 100. You're not listening to shit. Keep it 100. And with this whole trip radar, with the cascade now, I like the trip radar that's got side-by-side -side comparisons. I like that. Show me everything across the screen. I love trip radar. I call it the buffet. I like the buffet because I can scroll through the buffet like this. I can say, okay, that one's $32. Nope, that's an average of a dollar per mile. That's like 50 cent a mile. That's $2 a mile. Oh, shit, here's one that's $8 a mile. Bloop, take that one. And I'm just slowly scrolling up because as I'm scrolling, I'm calculating going up. But this, you got to keep thumbing through, thumbing through. Imagine if you didn't know what rides were coming down the pipe and you're just thumbing through because you got the cascade now. You don't get to see all the trips at once. You go, and you're thinking, oh man, here's something that's $2 a mile. You accept it. Never knowing right behind that was a probably $8 a mile trip. Because you're not going to go through the whole stack of cards. Just imagine you got a stack of cards in your hand. You're not going through every card to turn around and go back through every card because you forgot the calculations already. And then on top of that, you might try to go back through the stack and some of the cards are missing because other drivers are taken out of the stack. That's why I like the trip radar the way it was set up. Let me go down the screen and see what exactly. I love the side by side comparison, the stack on top comparison like that. Like, okay, this was $32, that one's $47. Here's an $18 for two mile. I'll take that one. Because it's quick. I'm just scrolling down the screen like this. It's going, and I'm calculating as I'm scrolling. So I know what trips are up there. I don't have to keep going through wondering what's in the back of the stack, what's in the back of the deck. That's why I'm thinking trip radar is for those impatient people. That's the way they got it set up the cascade now because you might not want to miss that. Oh, if I thumb pass it, I'm going to miss it. Two dollars a mile, dollar fifty a mile. I might miss it. But see me, I'll keep thumbing out. X all that shit out. I don't want none of it because I want the good trip. The four dollar a mile, the nine dollar a mile, the eighteen dollar a mile. It's in there. But usually when trip radar was just scrolling, you can see it a lot quicker. You can have that side by side comparison, that top to bottom comparison right there. You didn't have to go through every single card. If I put a whole stack of cards, let's say 10 cards on the table with all the cards showing, all the faces showing, you would pick the ace real quick because you know what every other card is right there. You say, well, these are like twos, threes, sevens, eights, all this. But that's an ace. I want the ace. You will take the ace because you see all the cards on the table. Now imagine me put them in the stock stack. And you don't even know it's an ace in there. You see a two, a four, a ten, a jack. Oh, I'll take the jack. You take the jack. Next thing you know, it's a three ace. See, you didn't see that ace sitting behind that next three. You had a three, then an ace. That's how stacking does. You don't get to see every card at once. You don't get the side-by-side -side comparison. You're going to take the first card that looks good. Oh, a jack. I could use a jack. Let me take that jack. Oh, I could use a queen. Let me take that queen. You didn't even see the ace in there. Because it's, it's banking on the impatient, banking on the desperate person. It wants to stack everything up so you don't get to see what's in the stack. You got to keep going back through the stack again and say, okay, I went through the stack once. I know it's in the stack. Now let me go through it again. By that time, everything's gone. I don't like the new setup. Like I said, I'm the cynic. I don't like the new setup because I don't think it's set up for drivers. I think it's set up for desperate drivers. I think it's set up to confuse drivers, to make them more anxious and antsy. It's almost like having a, a surprise behind something. You don't know what's behind this. No, put everything in front of me. Let me see everything at once. Let me compare all my trips. Love Trip Radar. Because it's showing me everything. With the new stuff, nah, nah. And also, th this road information stuff. When they say, hey, would you um report if this street is closed? I forgot about that. Would you report if this street is closed? Would you report if there's any traffic or not? How about for every report that a driver helps out? For every report they send, when they click that button, you get an automatic $2 added to your fare. Because if we're going to help y'all out, pay us for it. It's, that's important information, right? Is information not valuable? If, is information not worth something to you? Is it not worth something to everybody out there? Then pay us for it. Because you got these riders paying you all of this money. And you got us out here doing all of this work telling you, oh, this is a road closure. Oh, this is traffic over here. Oh, it's a bus in the way. Oh, it's a train coming. You got us reporting all this shit, but you ain't thinking, hey, throw that dude an extra $2 for helping us out. He's helping us out and he's helping to cut. Throw him extra two bucks. No, this is all free labor. All free labor. All this reporting shit is nothing but free labor. When that shit come up, I just hit X. I ain't answering that shit because you ain't giving me no money for that information. You're playing people. Playing people. 
Hey, help us out, man. Let us know so we can send drivers the other way and let us. No, fuck that. No. For every time somebody helps out the app, they should get extra $2 payment on it. If that little chick come up, is this still traffic? Yes. Your fare goes up by $2. Cool. Thank you. Well, you help the app out. The app's going to pay you back. Hey, is it a train in the way? Yep. Hey, this road is closed. Hey, this place is blocked right here. Every time you, you by the time you get to the end of your trip, you done added six bucks. You done reported a, a road closure, a traffic jam, and a train in the way. You got extra six dollars on your fare just for helping the app out. That's how it should be. If you want to really help the drivers out, we giving you good information. We're giving you valuable, useful information, information that you need. But yet, we don't get paid for that shit. Guaranteed Uber gets paid for y'all get paid for somebody just switching a trip, editing a trip, moving a trip. Y'all get paid for that. Why don't we get paid for shit? And that's what I'm talking about, man. I don't think this shit is really set up for drivers. They put it in that package of we're helping you out. You know, I think you're helping out people that don't know how to read this language and people that have a problem. You know, a lot of people in America that are Americans are illiterate. Shit, you not. A lot of Americans are mathematically challenged. You can look at the math scores over the past five years in America. And this is just math scores in children, college people, high school people. Our math scores are going down. So I'm telling you right now, people don't understand and comprehend how numbers work and they relate to each other no more. So instead of them making it easier to compute math, no, they're making it easier for you to pick somebody up. Easier for you to report, you know, if it's traffic for free and shit, you're a free traffic reporter now easier for you to get anxiety and hurry up and pick a trip out of a stack before you lose that trip because you can't do side-by-side -side comparisons no more like we used to do on trip radar that's what this shit is about it's not about helping you as a driver it's about making it easier for them to get over on your ass because you don't have all the information you need or you're giving them information for free one of the two because if you ask me to report no i ain't reporting shit are you paying me are you giving me extra dollar two dollars what are you giving me on this trip nothing now i'm not fucking with you trip radar it was fine the way it was. It was fine the way it was. How are they making all these profits? All these record profits. Record profits. So apparently the app works fine if you're making record profits. What is the change for? The change is for the new people that don't want to sit and try to break down English words. They don't want to sit and read, you know, German words or Spanish words or, you know, Japanese words. They don't know that shit. They can't break that down fast enough. They can't conjugate it fast enough. They can't read street names and all that shit fast enough. So you just say, that's where you're picking up the person. That's where you're dropping the person off. Got it? Got it. That's all it is. That shit ain't for me because I know my area. If you tell me that shit's on Millen University, I know exactly where Millen University is because I've done it four or five years. I live here. I know what's up. You tell me, hey, it's in Mesa. I know where Mesa is. Hey, Jeff, it's up in Peoria. Okay, cool. 75th Street. I'll, I'm 75th Ave. I'll be there. 75th Ave. Gotcha. I'll be there. All this shit right here is for people that don't know this city like I know this city. For new people that just got to this city. I'm telling you, I'm the cynic. I see through shit. A lot of people might say, no, man, you're just hammering on it, man. You don't. Eh, eh. That's how them motherfuckers act. Man, you're always thinking of something negative. No, my motherfucking bank account is going negative. That's the only thing I think is going negative because of all this shit. Everybody losing their cars, getting evicted. Everybody's losing money left and right on tires and fucking brakes and oil changes and shit like That's what's negative. Me? No, I'm just cynical negative with the shit that's really going on in this real world charging somebody 85 dollars giving a driver 22 that's negative charging somebody 176 dollars from the airport to go somewhere giving a driver 43 that's negative don't call me negative you can call me cynical all you fucking want but don't call me negative because if you ask me jeff you've been driving this app for four and five years man how are you still making money on these apps because i don't fall for they bullshit and what i'm saying with all these new things I think it's bullshit. That's just me, though. You might think, oh, it's great. Of course it's great. It's going to help other people that can't function and can't service these streets and, and this climate and this, uh, this community as well as you can. It's helping them out, which is cool. Like I said, all power to motherfuckers. But we already know what's going to happen. They're going to take every single trip because they don't know that these dollars are not worth shit. They don't have that calculation on their screen saying, hey, this is the only thing you're getting per mile. This is the only thing you're getting per hour. Put that calculation on the fucking screen. Then I'll tell you, they're trying to help drivers make better decisions. To a whole new level of Uber slave. That's right. Uber is testing a service that lets you hire drivers for chores now. I mean, when you start reading about the different chores that they're 
allowing you, you can slow this video down at any minute because I'm not reading this shit to you. I'm looking at this like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. They're having drivers drive to your house to do chores at your house now. Then we're not drivers. This is called Uber laborers, not Uber drivers. So if you want to have somebody grocery shop for you, that's what you use like Uber deliveries for, you know, stuff like that. Because they're really not driving people around. They're more like delivery people, like DoorDash and stuff like that. They're, to me, they're really not drivers. They're like, you know, service people. They, they provide a service for you, which is grocery shopping for you. But now these motherfuckers talking about yard cleanup, garden maintenance, mowing the lawn. Are you? This is Uber slave. And you know damn well, they don't pay us enough for driving people in these cars. We tearing these cars up every day. And now you want to cut us some money of me going to rake somebody leaves now. So I go rake the leaves for ten dollars an hour, twenty dollars an hour, and Uber turns around and makes sixteen, eighty dollars, but I get twenty dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, just just use Uber Slave, use Uber Slave. I'm like, man, you watch your damn mind. I don't even know where the end of the article is. They out their damn mind. The second consecutive profitable quarter for 2023 last week. Uber is trying to get their hands in everything people do. In a minute, it's going to have Uber breathe. You're going to be able to fucking pay Uber some money to take a breath. Hey, you want to breathe on Wednesday? Send us 40 bucks. We're going to let you inhale all the motherfucking oxygen you want. This is called Uber Ox, motherfucker. Uber O2. <laughs> you, can, you can inhale some goddamn oxygen all fucking day. You just pay us 40 bucks. You can breathe freely, motherfucker. Uber always up to some shit. I ain't never seen no shit. I mean, that's why if... if if somebody need to come mow my lawn, there's kids in my neighborhood that can do that shit. This old school shit. I can just go get a kid. Hey, man, you want to make $15, $20? Yeah, come mow my lawn, man. That's old school shit. Hey, you want to rake my leaves? Yeah, man, here's 15 bucks. Rake these leaves. Oh, you want to clean up around the weeds around my hair? We got enough homeless people in this motherfucking country that could be doing this work without Uber being involved. If you need some shit done, just tell a homeless motherfucker, hey, man, I see you standing here begging for 15, 20 bucks. How about you just come to my house real quick? Pick all these motherfucking weeds on the side of my house. I'll slide you 25. I mean, you, you're only standing around the corner from my house anyways. Walk your ass around. Push your little shopping basket around. You can even bring your dog with you. Bring your dog. I'll give him some water and shit. Pick up the leaves. I'll slide you 25 $30. You ain't doing shit anyways. That's me reaching out to somebody who might need the money. Once you start getting Uber involved in fucking shit like, come on, man. Come on, man. Uber walk the dog. Motherfucker Uber wash my dishes. Motherfucker Uber clean out my fridge real quick for me. I mean, what else? Uber laundry. This shit is getting out of hand, man. These apps is really trying to get involved in our everyday life where we could just go talk to somebody and get them to do it. I, there's a lot of kids in my neighborhood, and that's how we used to get these kids money. If it ain't enough chores to be done at your house, go talk to Miss Mary down the street. Go talk to Miss Hattie up the hill. Go talk to Miss Hattie. Hattie Reed. Go talk to Miss Hattie Reed and see if she needs something done at her house. She might slide you 10 bucks for the arcade, kid. But instead, now we got corporate America involved in shit like that. Oh, no. We want to we wanna get deeper in this slave labor shit. This is kind of working out. We got motherfucking immigrants over here. Now, these immigrants can do yard work, lawn maintenance. These immigrants can do this shit. I mean, what, what do we got all this shit? No, no. We can really have this happen, man. We got enough people over here that's, that can clean dishes, you know, fold your sheets up, motherfucking make your beds and shit. We can call it Uber Tass and send a whole bunch of immigrants to everybody fucking house to get this shit done now because they need work anyways and we can kind of get in and get that money too. Because you know in 2021, the White House said undocumented immigrants can are now legally allowed to work in this country. You don't think Uber and Lyft is on that shit tough? Oh, they like, wait a minute. So you sent all these people we allowing over the border, all these people we allowing over the Atlantic, over the Pacific, all these people we're allowing from Canada to come down and everything, we can now work them in this fucking... Oh, we getting our hands in this. We getting our hands in this. That's what these people are doing right now. They're taking American labor. Labor that's done on American soil. I know you want to call... Once an immigrant is on American soil, they're constituted as an American and should be paid as an American. That's what I think. If you want to pay an immigrant in India, the cost of living in India, cool. Pay a, pay a, a person over in Bangladesh, what it costs to live in Bangladesh... Pay a person in Pakistan what it costs to live in Pakistan. Cool, but once you in America, you got to pay people what it costs to live in America. And they using these people like pawns right now. Got all these, oh yeah, yeah, let's meet immigrants as you can. Because we got we got goals for these people. We can make money off they back. We got Uber Tass coming out. We going to have these motherfuckers giving dogs bath and cats bath and shit like that in a minute. We want to get our hands in that shit. 
Tell you, man, corporate America, there's no end to the slavery. There's no end to the slavery. 